Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite shooter maps, Giga Wing, released in arcades in 1999 for Dreamcast for each year the following year. As with most shooter maps, the main aim of the game is to blow up whilst avoiding enemy fire and accumulating a high score. On the subject of high scores, Giga Wing's scoring system is known for being very generous or even downright ridiculous. The real record stands at roughly 291 thousand billion. More conventionally, Giga Wing boasts a range of power-ups, which vary depending on the ship you choose. This game will often throw hundreds of bullets at you simultaneously, so to even things out, the game features a couple of ways for you to defend yourself when evasion seems impossible. These are the Force Bombs, of which you have a limited supply, and the Reflect Force, which can be used an infinite number of times, but requires recharging. The Force Bombs render all enemy fire useless and cause destruction to all in their path. Also, the reflect force acts as a shield and reflects bullets back where they came from. Used in tandem, these two weapons can prove to be extremely effective and form the basis of my assaults on bosses. Sure, relying on these powers might not be the most skillful tactic, but hey, I'm not here to give you a masterclass in playing this game, I'm just here to review it. The slight gripe I have with Giga Wing is that the reflect force takes a second or two to activate, which can sometimes prove frustrating. We've just got to learn to deal with it, and it don't really detract from my enjoyment of the game. Breaking up the action are short cutscenes which explain the plot of the game. The story changes depending on which of the five characters you choose. To me, these segments seem like more of a distraction than anything, but I guess judging a shooter map based on its story is a bit like judging a Ferrari on its fuel consumption, kind of missing the point. What Game Wing does offer is some challenging yet extremely enjoyable gameplay. With its seven stages being packed with insane shooter map action. You choose between several difficulty settings, but even the easiest mode, which I'm using in this review, offers the stern test of your reflexes and evasive skill. As well as the original arcade mode, the Dreamcast version features a score attack mode, where you can tackle individual stages and a picture gallery, so I don't really care for the latter. With punishing bosses, cool power ups, and an interesting stage design, Giga Wing's gameplay gets 9 out of 10. As I've mentioned already, Giga Wing often fills the screen with bullets, and the Dreamcast coped with this admirably for the most part. That said, there were a couple of occasions where there was noticeable slowdown, which made it seem a little less polished. I'm sure you can see for yourself that Giga Wing is an incredibly colourful game, there's never a dull moment visually. A slight drawback of Giga Wing's breathtaking graphics is that I sometimes found it a little hard to make out my ship in all the chaos, but maybe that was just me. Gigawin gets a great, but not perfect, 8 out of 10 for graphics. As well as playing and looking awesome, Gigawin's soundtrack is also impressive. Though you won't spend much time dwelling on its sound design when you're playing it, because of the frantic nature of the gameplay. The sound effects are great too, but once again I found it difficult to focus on them. It's hard enough for me to dodge the flying bullets hurtling towards my ship. The audio gets 9 out of 10 for me. Despite the fact that the Dreamcast controller is not one of the best game pads, Giga Wing controls responsibly, as is necessary for a game requiring such precise manoeuvring of your aircraft. The control scheme can be fully customised. I personally use the left trigger for the rapid fire shot, the right trigger for a single shot, and the reflex force, which can be activated by holding down this button, and B for bombs, but it's completely up to you. With no gripes to speak of, I've got to give the controls 10 out of 10. Giga Wing initially offers you a choice of four characters, and you can unlock another one by beating the game on one credit, which surprisingly I managed. The story changes depending on what character you choose, so in that respect, Giga Wing offers plenty to keep you coming back for more. Plus, you can unlock artwork and save your high scores. You can also team up with your friends, but I haven't tested this feature. If you're the kind of guy who likes to try and complete and unlock it, Giga Wing should satisfy your desires. But for me, the gallery and narrative segments were unnecessary. For that reason, I give Giga Wing 8 out of 10 for last in appeal. In conclusion, Giga Wing is one of my favourite shooter maps, right up there with the likes of Galaga, Xevious and Fireshot. The developers clearly didn't know the meaning of subtlety. Everything about Giga Wing is insane, from its huge high scores and stunning graphics, to the bullet fests, which often ensue. One of the factors in the Dreamcast demise was its lack of third party support, but if there had been more games like this released, I believe it would have fared much better. It's not perfect, but still an immensely enjoyable game, and it's a must-have for any Dreamcast owner. I'd give it 9 out of 10. Okay guys, 
Hope you enjoyed it today, and I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.